Seven spades, the ace, king, and out. Now, if this hand isn't played in spades, what does this hand work? Nothing. Not much. You might take a trick. On good days, you'll take two. But other than that, it's not worth much. Now, if this hand is played in spades, what's it worth? I anticipate I'm taking six tricks on a bad day with this suit. On a good day, I'll take seven. Okay? So if we get to play this hand in spades, this hand is a very good hand. And if we get to play this hand anywhere else, this hand is not. Now, let's say it's your first, you are the dealer. You are the first person to bid, okay? Does this hand rise to the level of being worth a one level bid? No. no, no. It doesn't, okay? We rule a 22, high card points, number of cards in the mud, two longest suits, number of quick tricks. It's not an opening hand at the one level. Does that mean that I need to be quiet? Yeah, because I heard Ed's lesson. And Ed said, I'm about to pay money to play bridge, and I should derive some enjoyment for making things difficult for the person on my left and the person on my right. So with this particular hand, I am going to open this hand. I've got seven spades. How do I open this hand? Three spades. Three spades, which is code for my partner. My partner and I have talked about this. And what we decided was partner when I open three spades. You should not expect me to have a good hand. If I had a hand such as this, okay, now what do I have? Now I've got seven spades to the ace king plus the ace jack of clubs. Is this hand worth an opening bid? Yes. It is. So how do I bid this hand? One spade. And then if the if I have the ability to, I might bid two spades. And then if the bidding comes around to me again, it's possible I might bid three spades, which is code for partner. I got a boatload of spades. Sounds like seven but I have an opening hand. Okay. But change it back to this, and I'm going to bid my entire hand at once. My hand is worth one bid, and that bid is three spades. Partner, I do not have an opening hand. I do not have a good hand outside of spades. Okay. Does that make some sense? Any questions so far? Okay. I would encourage everybody in this room to play week twos. Okay? Do you know what a week two is? It's the opposite of a strong two. <laughs> Seriously. Okay? Back in the day, back when I learned, I learned strong twos. Okay, which said that if I open two clubs or two diamonds or two hearts or two spades, all of those were big hands. Big hands, I've got this suit, you may not pass. I want to be in a game contract or really close to a game contract. Strong twos. Now, next week's lesson, we are going to talk about how to open big unbalanced hands with diamonds, hearts, or spades. Okay. We're going to open them two clubs. Two clubs is our catch-all, I have a big hand bid. Okay. And if you make two clubs your catch-all, I have a big hand bid, okay, then that frees up two diamonds, two hearts, and two spades for something else. And the something else I'd encourage you to play is called a week two. Okay? A week two bid is very similar to a week three bid. Okay? It's just done at the two level instead of the three level because we only have six cards in our suit.
Okay, so with this fine hand, we'd open it three spades. Now, I took a spade away and turned into a, into a diamond. Okay? Is my hand worth much if we aren't playing in spades? No. Still probably not. Okay? Do I want to take up some bidding room? That answer is yes. I want to. I'm about to pay $4 to play bridge. I want to say, and here's the way I do it. Sit down on my table. Take out my stop card. I'm going to make a skip bid. Please wait. Put it on the table. Pull out two spades. Set it on the table. And the person on my left should wait 10 seconds before bidding. Okay, just something they should do. Okay, we'll talk about why on a Saturday lesson when I've got more time to talk about that. But during those 10 seconds, if I were at my kitchen table, I would be standing up, banging my chest, <laughs> saying, ha, 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 you now get to start describing your hand at the three level. Good luck with that, because I've taken up two levels of bidding. If my left-hand opponent has a good hand, he gets to start describing his hand at the three level. Which is easier for y'all to do? Open a bid normally at the one level or start describing your hand at the three level? Normally. Yeah. Okay. So, that makes some sense. Any questions? Yes, sir. Can there be any six or seven cards in the suit? It depends. <laughs> now, <clears throat> there's really two ways to play preempts. Okay? The first way is the way I'm going to describe to you. It's a way I um, encourage you to play. Okay? I would encourage you to play something called a Discipline Week 2. Does Ed Kinlaw play Discipline Week 2? No. He does! No. He actually does. When he plays with partners that we have the agreement, Ed, when you bid two spades, I expect you to have a good suit. What am I going to have? I'm going to have a good suit. Okay, if I'm playing with somebody that wants me to have six spades, what am I going to have? Six spades. Okay, so it depends on how you play, but I'm going to encourage you to play Discipline Week 2. Okay, the definition of a Discipline Week 2 is having two of the top three or three of the top five honors, including the ace or the king. Okay, so um, two of the top three, so ace-king, ace-queen, king-queen, or any ace-jack-10, king-jack-10. Okay? Good suits. Okay, first or second seat, I'm going to have a good suit because my partner has not had an opportunity to act yet. I do not know what my partner's hand looks like. And if I open with a week two and my partner has a reasonably good hand, it's possible we might belong in a game contract. Okay, so I should have a good reason to open with a week two, and that good, that good reason is going to be some definition of a good suit. Okay. Does that make some sense? Uh, <laughs> yes, ma'am? What is the point limitation on a week two? That's a great question. The point limitation on a week two is any definition of a good suit. So in theory, King Jack 10, so four. Most people have at least five, but I've, King Jack 10 is a good suit. So I'll, if I've got King Jack 10, I'm going to open, and I'll do it on four count, up to a non-opening hand. Okay, because if you have an opening hand, you open it. So four to ten, give or take. Uh, question? I was going to ask the same question, but about, about seven. No, no, have seven of the suits if you're a, a limitation. Um, 
if you have a seven card suit, still, and the definition of the ceiling is I don't have a hand I can open at the one level. Because if I have an opening hand, I open it at the one level. Okay? This is an opening hand, I'm going to open it at the one level. The fact that I've got extra length in my suit just means I'm going to be rebidding my suit. Okay, so five to ten or so. Okay, yes, sir. You use spades as an illustration. Uh, it's good to have spades. I know, but it's, it's a, for the three level, is that applicable to any student? Absolutely, that's a great question. Um, at the three level, any suit that I have is going to be. Um, I mean, I have spades because it's good to have spades. If I have spades, they can't outbid me. But get, get, give me this hand. Okay, give me that, and I've got a three club open. Now, this is important. And you will only foul this up once, okay? Because when you, when you foul it up, it will be a foul up of a magnitude of a level that the earth actually might shift off of its axis, okay? Next week, we're going to be talking about two club openers. Two club openers are how I open all of my big hands. On occasion, you may get dealt a hand that looks like this. This is great. I've got a good club suit. I want to preempt. And you say, you would never do this. <laughs> and nobody here would ever do this. But I've heard it done that people open this hand two clubs. And then their partner keeps bidding, <laughs> and you don't realize what you've done. So the auction probably goes two clubs, pass, two diamonds, pass, three clubs, pass, three hearts, pass. <laughs> <laughs> ah! And you, 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 the train just keeps going. There's no way to stop it, and, and bad things start happening. So, seriously, it only happens once. You cannot preempt two clubs. Okay, so with this hand, if you feel like preempting, and this is a hand that I personally would feel like preempting, I'm going to open this fine hand that only has a six card club suit, three clubs. Okay, well, with, yes, sir. If you made a mistake and opened it two clubs, would that draw a director call? <laughs> the, que the question was, and, and it probably would, okay, the question was, if you open this hand two clubs, would it cause a director call? No, it would cause your partner to jump across Okay, the it probably <laughs> would. The director might be called. Uh, and, you know, y'all are just learning how to play this game. You are allowed to foul up. Okay, so he would call the director, calling if good things happen for if your side bumbled into a good contract. And that's the only way you get there with this hand if you open it two clubs. Bumbling must be involved. Okay? And the director was called, I made a mistake. And you're allowed to do that. Okay, as long as you don't do it on purpose. Because making mistakes on purpose is, I don't know what it's called, but it's this sabotage. probably wouldn't apply. Yes, sir? On like a two club bid, are you asking for looking for slam? Uh, when I open two clubs, I have a massive hand. I have a hand that is too big to open at the one level and too big to open two no trumps. So if I catch my partner with a good hand, then there might be a slam in the offing. But if I open two clubs... I'm just saying, partner, oh, it's too big to open at the one level, and it's too big to open to no. So don't pass. In essence, a two-club opener says, partner, it's possible that my hand is so big that you would pass my one-level opening bid, and we would have enough for game. So I'm going to force you to bid even if you don't have anything. Yes, sir? You open three clubs. Is partner expecting seven or at least 
Ace King and Jack, he's King and Queen? I don't know, Jack. If he opens three clubs, are you expecting him to have Ace King, Jack, six? Or any six worthless beans? I'm expecting to have six to ten points and seven clubs. There you go. He's expecting you to have six to ten points and seven clubs. You and your partner may want to have this discussion. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am. If you overcall, if you have seven spades, you overcall three spades. Oh, my goodness, great question. <laughs> you want to talk about fouling up the opponent. Okay, I've got seven clubs, and my left-hand opponent, my right-hand opponent opens one diamond, and I say... I'm going to make a skip bid. Please wait. Three clubs. Bam. 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 <laughs> Deal with me. Because now you get to start describing your hand as a responder at the three level. And sometimes you land on your feet and sometimes you don't. Okay. So yes, I'm going to preempt as an opening preempt. I'm also going to preempt as an overcall. Okay. Other questions? Yes, sir. If your partner opens and you could you preempt you would preempt a left hand at that point? And this is another question you should have with your partner. I'm, got, I'm not going to belabor this point much. Your partner opens one club, and it's your bid. The next person passes. I know people who would bid two spades with this hand because it's not worth a one spade response. It only has four points, but it's got six spades. Okay, I know people who would bid two spades with this hand. Now, I'm going to give you some advice. This is called a weak jump shift. How do you know it's a jump shift? Because I jumped and I shifted. And how do you know it's weak? And this is the important question. Because my partner and I had a discussion. And we said, hey, if you open one club and the next person passes and I bid two spades, there's really two ways to play this. I either have zero to five points or I've got 17 plus. Okay, because most, because a lot of people play strong jump shifts. It is vitally important that you and your partner know which you play. What if you play both? Then your partner's just gonna go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> pass? What do you mean pass? I had a 17 count. And then the next time you do with a four count, say, why are you keeping on bidding? I only have four points. And you gotta do it one way or the other. Now, personally, which do y'all get dealt more of? Four-point hands or 17-point hands? Four. Yeah, so if I were choosing and I had this discussion with my regular partner, I'd probably play weak jump shifts. These are alertable, by the way. Okay, This is the first time I'm going to tell you that um, if it goes one club past two spades, your partner should alert the opponents that you've done something extra special fancy. The partner of the person who did the jump shot. All right. Uh, yes, sir. You could use three spades as a big hit. If you play for a couple of years before we start having talks. This is America. Do anything you like. Um, I'd encourage you to use three spades for something else. Right now we're on lesson eight. I think that's lesson 82. Oh, God. All right. Any other, uh, yes, ma'am. What would the alert be? The alert would be my partner has done something extra special fancy. If you want to know what his bid means, ask me. What do you actually say, though? Alert. You say alert. Alert. But when they ask alert. you, you, you say, say my partner has a, week, has a six spades and zero to five points. 
It's called a weak junction. All right. Questions, comments? Yes, ma'am. So if you, if you do play the strong jump ship, how would you respond with that hand to the partner? I would either pass or I would bid one spade. I, either one could work out well or poorly. Okay? Yes? Do you have any discernment in terms of opening a weak bid versus overcalling a weak bid in terms of shape, defensive possibilities? Just asking. Just yeah. Um, it, it personally, if I'm preempting, I will preempt on weaker hands than I would have to open. Okay? Because it... When I'm preempting as an opening bidder, I might be getting in the opponent's way. Okay, if they've already opened, I have full certainty that I am getting in the opponent's way. Sometimes they get it right and sometimes they don't. When we were in college, when we learned Gore and we learned strong sweet two, strong two, jump ship. I encourage you, yeah, this new way is better. I, it took me a while, but I finally gave up that strong jump ship. Go try the new way. I think you'll like it. The way, the way. And, and we actually had one dealt a couple weeks ago. We had a three. We had a partner opens one club, and you've got seven hearts to the queen and a three count. And the auctions took curious turns all around the room, <laughs> from as I recall. All right. Yes, ma'am. That's a good question. I am in first or second seat. I don't tend to. In third seat, has my partner had a chance to act? In third seat, he has. So in third seat, uh, what do you need to preempt in third seat? <coughs> Thirteen cards. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, that old keep. By the, by the way, for those of you who are paying attention, it's six thirty and time to play bridge. It is possible that there are parts of this lesson that we did not get to today. Okay. Uh, there's stuff in your book. Saturday mornings are a good way to. Okay, because Saturday and. You know, talking about Stan and Jacoby. There was stuff on J Stan and Jacoby that we just didn't touch. Okay? All right. I'm now going to turn you over to Paul. Good luck. Play well. That Saturday morning deal is the best deal in any room. You sign 